Well, it's lovely to welcome you virtually to The Hill. And as with all our school groups, we usually ask them to divide into smaller groups. And normally you will have walked down with me to stand outside the library. And I always ask schools to do this because I encourage you all to look up to see this writing that's here in carved into the stone. And I always ask, what language do you think it is? Now, I can't hear what you're going to say, but it is in fact ancient Greek. We always talk about that with boys and girls with the idea that you should feel very comfortable being here in this library through reading, through writing. So let's see if you feel that. And I'd like you to come now and find, do you get that lovely sense of feeling happy and that your soul feels good? So just come this way, please. Well, boys and girls, normally when schools come here, the entrance I always ask them to take a few minutes just until I can explain something if you are coming back to visit us with your families normally what you would do is you'd come up here and you would use this buzzer and then we could see who's at the door and we could let you in but because you are our VIPs there's no need for the buzzer today you're actually the boys and girls who would come to visit us in school groups and as a result I'll be the one able to open the door and let you all come in so please come in follow me and girls we normally ask our school groups to wait here at the top of the landing mainly to get everybody up to this part and also to hear what they've what they've noticed on the way up maybe notice what the stairs are like that they're there they can be a bit loud and clunky that you're looking at some of the banisters that sort of thing and that you're now wondering where is this library what is Arma Robinson library like and so I normally ask very strong boys and girls if they would like to open this door because I don't know if you can see just beside me it's a pretty large door so I haven't got any of you here with me I'm going to have to do it myself so come on into the library Boys and girls, normally when we have school groups here with us, you're then seated, you're asked to sit around in a circle of seats. Obviously, we don't have those today. In fact, I hope at the moment you are sitting somewhere very pleasant, either at school or at home, and that you're watching this, um, particular, this particular visit. Now, we're always keen to welcome schools here, and even more so because this library was built in 1771, which means it's almost 250 years old. It's a wonderful building and we would like to let you know a little bit more about it. Now I'm sure you may well be aware that when anybody goes to build a building, they need to have an architect and an architect will come up with drawings in advance of any building taking place. Well, we are very fortunate because we have the original drawings that were, were used before this building was built. They're held here in this particular folder and normally I would ask a boy or girl to help me by turning over the first page to look at some of the drawings. They're all in here. It's very good that we have these. And by looking at the very first one, you'll see that there are only three windows shown in this particular drawing. And that's because when the library was first built in 1771, it was much smaller. It took up to 70 years before it was made larger. And you will see now, when you get a chance to look around the room, that there are five main window windows, rather than the three that are shown in the original drawing. Now, normally, if you were here with me, I would ask you for suggestions. Why do you think the library had to be make, made larger um, over those 70 years? I always get great answers, really logical answers from boys and girls. And usually, people will come up with a very straight and logical answer we ended up with so many books at that time and maybe a lot of visitors. Indeed it was that there were so many books coming into the library, it had to be made larger. So from about 1840s, we ended up having the library as you will see it today when you visit us. So we go from a three bay window to a five bay window. 
And the windows are important to us. People will always mention them, both when they're standing outside looking at the library and then when they're inside. And I usually ask a, p a boy or girl to count through four of these particular drawings until we get to a special view of the window. And there's always this great interest. I would like pupils to see this, how the architect didn't make all the decisions himself. He actually gave an offer to the person who was paying for this. And the person is Archbishop Richard Robinson. And he was very keen that Armagh would have a library. And so this particular architect, who was called Thomas Cooley, and was very well known at that time, and Archbishop Robinson very much approved of the work, the design, the style that Thomas Cooley came through with. He then gave the option to the Archbishop to take a look at what sort of designs would he like for the window. And you can see here different suggestions being made. And perhaps if you live in Armagh and you're nearby and you can come and have a look, even when we're not open, you could look up outside to see what are the windows like? What choice did Archbishop Robinson make just before the building was built? So that gives you an idea. Normally we would let you have a look through to see because these are safely in museum envelopes so that people can look at the drawings very, very easily. Shortly though, my colleague Rachel will let you know a little bit more about how we have our books shelved and how we look after them. Thank you, Carol. Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and I am wonderfully blessed to work here in Arma Robinson Library. I'm standing beside the shelves and I want to point out something to you which we think is very interesting to do with our shelves. You might see at the top that there are some letters across A, B, C, D and so on. So this might lead you to think, well, their books must be categorised alphabetically, much like your books in school or in your local lending libraries. But I'm happy to tell you that this is actually not the case. When you look at our shelves, you might notice that if you look towards the lower shelves, that the books are quite large in size. And then, if you cast your eye up to the very top shelves, you might notice as well that the books are quite small in comparison to the ones at the bottom. And this is because our books are actually shelved by their size, not by alphabetical or not by category. So it means that our large books are on our very bottom shelves and our smaller books are at the top. Now this might seem strange, but it makes good sense because if myself, Carol or another colleague had to get a high book down off the top shelves, it's at least a nice small book. So there's less chance of us causing any damage to ourselves, or indeed any damage to the book. And that's something that we definitely don't want to happen. So although it might seem strange, this is how it was in the 18th century and we wouldn't change this in the library because we think it works very well. We would be interested to know if this is the same in your school. We often find for boys and girls that their library uh, shelves their books by difficulty or alphabetically. So it's very different here in Arma Robinson Library. You might also notice from looking at the shelves that some of the books have a white ribbon around them. I'm just going to point one out for you here. And so this white ribbon shows us that this is a book that needs a little bit of extra care. So I'm going to show you now how we care for the really old books in Arma Robinson Library. So boys and girls, you would have seen that there are a lot of books on the shelves here in the long room of Arma Robinson Library. And I want you to know that they don't just stay on the shelves. If you were to visit us here in the library, you would be able to handle the books yourself with the help of the staff. And we also would have seen that some of the books have a white ribbon around them. And that means that those books need a little bit of extra love and care. So when we're handling in the books, we always are careful with the books because they are so old and precious. So if you were to visit and we wanted to handle a book, I'm going to show you what we would do before we would take a book off the shelves. So I have in front of me a pair of white gloves and that's the first thing that we would do before we would take a book off the shelf. We would put on our gloves and I'm going to do that for you now. So these are just white plain cotton gloves and we wear these because sometimes the books are old and they can be a little dusty. So it keeps our hands nice and clean. 
but also there are sometimes sweat and oil on our hands that can break down old books and sometimes the ink or the pages can get smudged and that's something that we definitely don't want to happen. So if you were to visit in the library, we would ask you all to put on a pair of white gloves if you're comfortable and that means then that you're ready to handle the books. So I have in front of me here an example of one of our larger books and if we wanted to open it, there is a special item that we use so that we don't cause any damage to the book. And I'm going to show you this item. This item here is called a book rest and it's quite spongy. You can see that I'm able to squeeze it and it's a little bit like a cushion for the book because there is a part of the book that we want to keep nice and safe and that is the spine of the book. So I'm going to hold this large book up for you so you can see the spine. And that is this part of the book along here. If I was to take this book and open it really, really quickly and really harsh, we could cause damage to the spine and that would mean that the pages would fall out of the book. And again, our books are precious, so that's something that we definitely don't want to happen. So I have my book and my book rest and I'm now ready to open it up. So all I do with my white gloves, I take the corner of the book and I'm able to open it nice and gently without causing any damage to the spine. So that's one of the items that we use. And I want to show you another item. So this is one of our smaller books. And if you or myself wanted to read the book, we have our white gloves and we open the book up to read. And you can see that some of the pages are sticking up. And if you or I had to keep pushing the pages down quite harshly, we might accidentally rip them without meaning to. So we take this item, it's quite a long item, and it might remind you of an animal. We call this a book snake, and this is what we use in order to keep the pages nice and flat. So I have my book in front of me, and I want to keep the pages flat. All I do is I take the book snake, and I rest it nice and gently on the pages. And the book snake has little weights inside of it, which means that it's heavy enough to hold the pages flat, but it's not heavy enough that it will cause any damage at all. So then when we're finished, all we do is we lift the book snake. Then we can close the book over. And when we're finished, we can take off our gloves. So if you were to visit us here in Armagh Robinson Library, you would be able to put on your gloves and handle some of our wonderful old books. And I also want to show you as well just exactly what is inside these books. So this is an example of one of our very old books. And this book is a catalogue of furniture that would have been used in the 18th century. And we think someone like Robinson might have used this catalogue in order to help pick furniture for the library and for his home. Many of you might know catalogues such as the Toys R Us cat catalogue, especially coming up to Christmas. So this is something similar that people would have used in order to pick out furniture. And I'm going to show you some examples of some of the furniture from the 18th century. Armagh Robinson Library is filled with many cabinets which house our collection. And this cabinet beside me houses the collection of our temporary exhibitions. We have so many books in the library on so many different themes and topics, so we use this cabinet in order to show off some of the books that we have with different themes every couple of months. And we change these in order to show off just what we have in the collection. So in the cabinet currently, we have an exhibition on the theme of botany, and there are some lovely images of flowers and plants from the 18th century with some beautiful coloured images as well. So we want you to know that the library is filled with books with lots of different themes, botany being one, science another, history, mathematics, religion and novels as well. 
So we are wonderfully blessed with having books on so many different themes. I'm now going to pass you over to my colleague, Carol, who is going to show you one of the lovely examples of books that we keep on display. Well, boys and girls, you will have seen a number of books that Rachel showed you about. You'll see I'm wearing the white gloves, as she also advised you to do. And normally with, with group visits by boys and girls, we would be asking you to wear white gloves if you wish to do so. We never force people, but by now you will understand why we ask all our visitors to do that. So normally I would have a group of you standing around here with me, just hearing a little bit more about the library. And indeed, you're very good about making suggestions, coming through with ideas, and we look forward to having that once again. There's a very special book here, and we deliberately keep it hidden. And normally I'd ask a boy or girl to come to um, unveil it. So I'm going to do that, and I hope you'll be pleased with what you see. This is a beautiful copy of the Lindisfarne Gospels. You may have heard of them. They were written in the early 8th century. And this is a copy, so not the real thing at all. You will see the most beautiful jewels here, but they're not the real jewels. This was a gift given to us by a family in memory of one of their loved ones, Jack Lindsay. And the reason why it was given to us was they asked, could this be kept on show so that particularly for boys and girls coming to visit the library, they would be able to see this and even have a chance to look at it. And this is what we always do with a visit. You'll have heard about the book rest from Rachel. And this is always a surprise. When I would ask a boy or girl to open up this book, they find it very, very heavy. So that's a beautiful example of how the book rest is doing a very fine job protecting the spine of this particular facsimile copy. And then we'd ask people to have a look through as they would wish to do. They show the Gospels that are of Mark, Matthew, Luke and John. And normally I ask boys and girls, can they remember what they are? And you are very good because normally you come through straight away with that. Once we mention Matthew, up you come with Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And that is how we, we would look at them and see them depicted here. You're always welcome to have a look at something like that. So that is one of the, one of the treasures that we would encourage boys and girls to take a look at. And we always keep it out on display, normally under glass, so that if you were to come and visit us at another time with your families, you wouldn't be saying to them, you know, there's a wonderful copy of the Lindisfarne Gospels, and then you couldn't find it. It will be here on display. So talking of displays, we always need cabinets or special cupboards for holding the, our collections. And we have a very special one coming up. This looks a very modern book. It is indeed, but it is showing you the designs that were done if you remember, Thomas Cooley was the architect, was the architect for this whole building. And you can get a good idea that Archbishop Robinson, and I should actually show you, here he is. This is a sculpture of Archbishop Richard Robinson. We always keep him here on display so that he can see what's happening. Um, he deserves to be right front and center doing this. And he was so impressed with Thomas Cooley's work for this building. He then said to him, I have some collections which I would like to have held in special cabinets. Will you come up with designs? This is a copy of the designs. And again, you will see he, Thomas Cooley did exactly the same as he did with the windows for the library. He offered choices to do with designs for the cabinets. And you can see this is not how they look. And I always say to boys and girls, we have the cabinets, can you see where they are? And so here you are, you can have a look and you can see the difference between what Thomas Cooley was suggesting to Archbishop Robinson and what Archbishop Robinson actually chose. So he was pleased to have that option choice and this is what he made. And in case you're wondering what's in them, there would be various collections. And this one is a very special one here and again, normally I'd ask a boy or girl to come and one to open one side and one to open the other side. And I'm not going to tell you anything more about what's in this collection because Rachel will tell you more about it. So Carol has very kindly opened up this cabinet for us here. And you might be able to see just from looking at the cabinet that there are two drawers missing but I don't want you to be worried about that at all 
because I'm now going to show you what exactly is in the drawers. So I have the two drawers here and I'm just going to reveal them for you now. So when I say the word gem, you may think of diamonds or rubies or some sort of precious jewellery. But these are examples of our gems in Arma Robinson Library. And I have taken out two drawers for you to have a look at. We have over 4,000 individual gems in our collection. So this is one of our dr gem drawers. And you can see here that we have quite a large gem here. And you may recognise the person in this gem as Medusa from the story with the snakes in her hair. Now, when I refer to these as gems, you might think that's strange because these are actually made out of a wax material. So I wouldn't touch them with my hands because like a candle, we may accidentally melt them without meaning to. So if you were to visit the library, we would invite you to hold the drawers and to have a look a little bit closer with our magnifying glasses but we would be very careful not to touch the gems with our hands. Boys and girls, thank you so much for being with myself and Carol today in Arma Robinson Library. We hope that you very much have enjoyed your virtual tour and that whenever you're able to visit us, we would love to welcome you back to look at not only the books in our collection, but some of the other, other wonderful things that we have. We will now invite you to please take your time and have a look around the library. Thank you.